In this video I'm going to show you how to make a padlock like this. You can move around the number dials with the d-pad and you can insert numbers in here. And when you press the unlock button and it's incorrect, it gives you a noise letting you know. And then when you put in the right code and press the unlock button, there's a noise and the bar pops up. If you're interested in learning how to make this, then stick around. This is a relatively simple thing here. I just made a cube here and a, I believe this was like a hollowed out donut, whatever you want to call it. It was a donut that I just cut a piece off of. There are two chips. One is called move lock bar and the other one contains the logic. The move lock bar is very simple. I have a tag for the locked position and a tag for the unlocked position and two teleporters. One goes to the unlocked, the other one goes to the locked. This microchip affects this inside sculpt here. If we group in, then it's um, this is a separate sculpt. All I have here is a node called unlock, which powers this keyframe. And all the keyframe does is swap the power on these teleporters. This teleporter by default is on, and it's teleporting it to the locked position. So if I start time, you can see it's in the locked position. And when this is on, it moves it to the unlocked position. This also plays this sound. This is the unlock sound. Inside of lock logic, it's also pretty simple. I have a controller sensor here, which is set to remote controllable. The up and down keys are what we use to move the numbers on the actual lock, as you can see here. When we press up and down on the D-pad, it powers this squeaky latch sound. The squeaky latch sound is what we hear when we change the numbers. These up and down wires are going into a combiner here. I'm placing the down arrow in the negative spot and the up arrow in the positive spot and these go into these chips. These chips are called number dial and they're all basically exactly the same. What I have here is the input node which takes in the combined up and down value and splits it back out so that the positive changes the output to the next position and the negative changes it to the previous output. I also have an input node that I called power which is coming from the selector and that turns this splitter on. That way, when we're pressing up and down on the D-pad, it's only affecting one of the dials. You can see here in this second number dial, this splitter is off, so when we're pressing up and down on the D-pad, even though it's wired in, it's not doing anything to the selector. I'm grabbing the active port from the selector. I'm outputting it through this number output node but I'm also displaying this number displayer. And the number displayer is what's showing here on the face. I also have this power node coming in to this border brightness and it powers it to 1% when that's the active one. You can see the border is glowing depending on which one I have selected at the time. These three numbers are then output from these chips and they go into this check solution chip. Check solution may seem complex, but it's really quite easy. The three numbers come in through these input nodes and they're going into a calculator. Those numbers are being checked against our solution. The solution is generated randomly using these three randomizers set to 10 ports on true random. And all I'm doing is I'm passing the active port out one change we can make to this is by changing the solution to being something that you'd like to manually set, for example. That would be pretty easy to do. We could put a microchip down, take everything in here, and move it in there, and rename this random solution. Now that this is in its separate chip, we can close this and create one more for a manual solution. This is going to be very simple. I'll take a value slider, an output node, 
connect these together. I'll set the value slider max value to 9 and I'll set the minimum value to 0 and I'll copy this twice just like this. One last thing I'll add here just as a nice ease or convenience feature is I'll get out a calculator and I'm going to use the round where is it? I'm going to use this round function here so that way when we plug that into the calculator you don't have to be super precise you'll know that this is being set to 2 and that's being set to 5 but if you got it here like 5.8 then that would be setting to 6 so it rounds up again this is just to make things a little bit easier for use this way I can come in here and quickly set something and I don't have to worry about it being exact although it's not really that big of a deal to just do it that way I'll plug these outputs into the same output nodes from here and the only thing we have left to do is to determine whether we're going to use the manual or the random by default I'll turn the manual off we'll get out a keyframe and we'll swap the powers on these so I'll turn the manual one on and the random one off and now I'll get out a switch which we can plug into this keyframe and now I'll just rename both the switch and the keyframe to use manual so when the active port inside of our number dial matches all three of these they go through this AND gate and send a positive signal this positive signal is connected to another AND gate which is also connected to the signal manipulator this is a signal manipulator set at pulse taking in the X button so when we press X it sends a brief pulse if both the button is pressed and the solution is correct we can send a signal to unlock which goes into our previous chip if the solution is not correct and the button is pressed it plays this rattly bolt sound signaling that you are unsuccessful one other thing I have here is a keyframe which turns on these three number displayers these are displaying the actual solution so if the switch is on they'll show and if the switch is off they won't in play mode we can test this out just by moving these numbers around you can see that they wrap backwards and forwards past 9 into 0 and vice versa and when we have the right code it unlocks the top when we have the wrong code and we press X nothing happens and when we have the correct code it opens obviously my sculpting skills are pretty weak but uh, I was just doing this for purpose of demonstration here it's very easy and quick this probably took me five minutes to put together as long as you have an idea of what you're going into when you decide to make something uh, you can actually put things together pretty quickly in dreams I'm gonna go ahead and upload this as remixable so that other people can take a look and use this if they want to I think if you're gonna use this in a game you'd probably want to make the sculptures look a little bit better but everything else is all there for you to use I'll leave a link to this element in the description box below if you want to find it that way you can also follow me in dreams under the name Vince Cully if you'd like me to make a tutorial on how to make uh, other types of game pieces like this please let me know I'd be happy to help people out with any problems they're having I'll be continuing on with my procedural generation videos I just thought this would be a nice change of pace to put out there for the day I hope you're doing well I'll see you next time